Okay, well, welcome back to Central Valley Business. I'm Chuck Leonard sitting in for the world traveling Mike Scott, who's in Tokyo right now with the Fig Advisory Board. Lucky him. Yeah. Billy, let's bring in our next guest, Nina Perez Reed. Nina, hello. How hello. are you? Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Uh, Nina is a local author, born and raised in Sanger, California. Uh, your book, Out of the Shadows, what's it, what is it? It's a story of forgiveness and hope. Uh, tells my story of coming from Mexico as an immigrant child and overcoming bullying, child abuse, adjusting to uh, a new language, to the new culture, and I just never gave up and I kept pers uh, persevering in search of my lifelong dream. So what, how old were you when you came to the United States? I was nine years old. Nine years old, okay, so you you kid, pretty big kid at that point, right? Right. You, mm -hmm. you, you're going to school in Mexico? I went all the way up to the fourth grade. In Mexico, in because Mexico. you start earlier in Mexico, right? Right. Okay, what, time, what, what, what age do you start in Mexico? Well, Four? we didn't have kindergarten, so <coughs> right, I must have been about five, <coughs> six years old. Okay. But when I came here, I had to repeat the fourth grade because of my age. Right. Uh, so you get here, and let's just face it, kids can be mean. Right? Yes. You, you, you get to school in Sanger and kids are teasing you? Uh, Is it, why? Because you don't speak good English? Because I didn't speak English and because oh, I you was, didn't speak any English. I didn't speak any English and because I was the, the new kid and I got called wetback or mojada is, right. is what the kids called me. And when I heard... Did that hurt the, your feelings? Oh, yes. A sh they a big deal. They, it really hurt. What would you go home and tell your parents? I don't want to go to school anymore, that I, kind of stuff. Just I go home and cry to my older sister and tell her I hated going to school because the, I just, I didn't want to be treated that way. No one wants to be made, made felt bad about themselves. Right. Right. Okay. Well, how long did that, did that go on? That probably ended by the time I went to uh, a new school. I went to Madison Elementary. The kids were much nicer. Madison, in Fresno? In uh, Sanger. In Sanger. And, and at that point, your English had probably gotten a lot better. My English was better. Um, I no longer got called names. It was still challenging because I, I still didn't speak the language that well. But I liked but there, Madison a lot more. There, there, there had to be a lot of other Hispanic children, though, out there. Were they weren't the ones teasing you, were they? It was a Hispanic, a Mexican little girl who who teased me the most. Calling you a wetback and stuff like yes. that? Yes, go back to Mexico and those kind of hurtful words just taught so, me. And coming from another Mexican child, that, that, that did it hurt more, you think? or it, Like it you was, should be, like darn it, you should be on my right, side, right. right? I felt confused because it was a young Mexican girl like myself who was that cruel. Was she like popular? Um, probably, I don't remember. Or was but she trying to get popular by being, I you know, because it, it's easy to pick on the, on the one that doesn't speak the good English and, and, and make fun of them. Right. Right. Yes. Okay. So, you grow up, you know, you, 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 I see you have a ring, you get a family. Uh, yes. I, my lifelong dream, as I was saying before, whenever I heard those hurtful words, I told myself, one day you'll speak English. One day you'll be respected. One day I'll have a family, four kids, a two-story house. So I had these beautiful images in my mind of my future. Well, I ended up having three kids, one less, um, but I made my dream come true. And when I graduated from Sanger High School, class of 87, and I spoke in uh, English and Spanish, I did the welcoming speech. Mm -hmm. It was like my way of wow. proving to myself mo more than anything right. that I was a worthy individual and that I had done it. I had achieved my dream. Mm -hmm. At what point did you think, well, man, I gotta, I gotta write a book about this? Um, well, I started writing to, uh, as a cathartic experience when I was a sophomore in high school. And I always journaled to write about my feelings, or I also used art. I did a lot of drawings just to release all that tension and mm -hmm. all that confusion inside of me. Um, it was in the 90s when I started to think about writing a book. And uh, late 90s and 2000 is when I wrote the first piece that came out in the, cell, in the uh, 
Fresno B. This was in the time capsule. Uh huh. So, uh, very light. I just talk about my experience as an immigrant working in the fields, and I. It was my way of encouraging others who were in the same situation that I had been in. Wow. By any chance, did you do the art on the front of this book? Well, I'd like to get the credit for it, but I didn't. <laughs> I just threw in a few ideas. Um, I always pictured myself looking at the future. So when I talked to the artist, I gave her ideas of the vineyards and the truck we used to ride whenever we drove to the fields mm -hmm. throughout Sanger, Jensen, McCall, all of those fields, uh, vineyards throughout Sanger, I was there. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because now when I go to work to Selma, I go through McCall every single day and I see those same vineyards where I used to be in years ago. Does it make you smile? <sighs> it makes me so glad that I don't have to be out there anymore. When you wrote this book, you, 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 you had already dealt with everything yourself. You wrote this book for other people to read and feel better about themselves, didn't you? I sure did. I, uh, having gone through all of that pain and having gone through all of those trials, and I, I was thankful that I survived all of that, and I was thankful that I had the wonderful people around me mm -hmm. that nurtured me and provided that guidance that I needed, and I wanted to be able to give that back to others because... You know, we live in a country with so much opportunity, and unfortunately, not all our youth takes advantage of that. Mm -hmm. And my way of sharing with the world, you can achieve, you can make every dream come true. I did it, and I started from scratch. Everyone can do the same. That mean little girl in elementary school, she didn't know how strong she was making you, did she? Oh, I, that was my internal weapon in here I was telling myself <laughs> one day you know in 10 years you'll speak English and uh, in the future things are going to be better and I always try to have that mentality awesome hey wh wh where can you find this book uh, you can find this on amazon.com uh, it's also on a Nook book at Barnes & Noble you can find it on digital form just go online and you'll find it uh, it's also on consignment at Arte Americas uh, you can also go to Heritage uh, Builders Publishing. It's a local publishing company. You can purchase it there. But, of course, I always have copies, so look for me. My website is ninaperezreed.com, and you can also purchase it there. Awesome. Nina, it was great talking with you. Thanks for coming by. It was great meeting you. Thank you for having me. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. Stick around.